Mihailo's interview, take one. I just wanted to sit like this so you can see the Enterprise here. <laughs> Here on Earth, we have everything. There is a, a Romanian poet who nailed it very well. And he says, Pe pământ avem de toate, și mai bune, și mai rele, și frunții deștepte, și lichele, și noroi, și stele. On, on this planet, we have everything, good and bad. We have geniuses and idiots. We have stars and mud. So home is everywhere. And it is on spaceship Earth. To the extent to which I can envision a way which can take us faster from the mud to the stars. If I would be to explain to someone in a bar what I'm doing, is actually working for those marginalized, giving power to those, to the underdog, <laughs> bringing the power to the fringes um, through technology. So making the world better through technology and, and, and more equitable through, through that. This is my mission. They probably buy a drink. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they say Romanians, I'm Romanian, and they say the Romanian is born a poet. So that's how I felt, that I was born a poet. So I was writing poetry since I started to, to write. In Romania, on television, we had Carl Sagan, his show Cosmos. And then, at the same time, we had Star Trek. So um, maybe you can see, yes, I am a Star Trek fan. You have here the Enterprise on my dress. I have the galaxy. I, I, I feel, uh, yeah, this is, this is who I am. By looking at the world in a different way through uh, what the Star Trek universe brought to me. You know, in a way, um, maybe because I was born there, but I was not aware I was a child, I felt an alien in the real world and I felt much more at home in the Star Trek universe. So my heart is, um, yes, is with science, with the universe. I identify myself a lot with uh, those people from the developing world because I was one of them. And I know their potential. And I see that it is, you know, so big, there's so much energy. When I left Romania, I was like a spring with so much energy, just ready to unleash it. And, and uh, when they find an opportunity, they will immediately, first of all, they will see it and they will grab it. Many people in the developed world don't bother to even see their opportunities. I realized that in the developing world, People are so used to be creative because they need to do everything with nothing. And in the developed world, <laughs> they do nothing with everything far too many times. Once you get to the gist of it, you realize that mathematics is in fact a language. You know, as you get creative with words and writing a poem, Mathematics is a, a beautiful language which enables us to encapsulate the mysteries of the universe and actually explain them. Creativity is in nature everywhere. And you know, most mathematicians have observed that. So for example, Joseph Fourier, I will quote him because he explains it so beautiful. There cannot be a language more universal and more simple more free from errors and obscurities, more worthy to express the invariable relations of all natural things than mathematics. It interprets all phenomena by the same language, as if to attest the unity and simplicity of the plan of the universe, and to make still more evident that unchangeable order which presides over all natural causes. This is what math is. It's this eureka moment because you feel that you revealed a truth about the universe. And uh, it's, a, it's a feeling which I think it's, it's more exhilarating than 
when you read a beautiful poem, although they have a lot in common. So if you really are involving all your creativity, you can discover the beauty of mathematics. We are the result of self-organization. Matter and cell found each other and put each other in the right place. And this is what evolution created. So in my work, I take those kinds of models and um, I'm doing, you know, engineering self-organizing systems in order to create structures and, and see how we can apply them to social structures. It is not possible to use a linear approach. You need um, a self-organizing of communities around their own problems in order to find local solutions. My work is called engineering self-organizing application, but broadly speaking, it's all about information, adaptive information infrastructures, because we coordinate uh, people and those communities through information infrastructures which now are very much on blockchain, through incentives which get people to do the right thing at the right time, at the right place. In the early days of Bitcoin, it was clearly opening the world to a new way of doing things. The first thing was disintermediation of the centralized powers and empowering the individual. Yeah, so now I can have full control of my money, at least something, yes, I can have full control of. But it could be more, why not? So I could have full control of my own identity. How can we make and manage this transition from identity belonging to the government, together with our lives and, and so on and so forth, to identity belonging to me. And then what will happen? Will it be chaos? Or can we self-organize to find ways for this transition to be smooth? But also, is it possible to organize society when people have full control of their identity? I believe in that. I believe that that is the future. And uh, it all depends yes, how we tweak the incentives. And this is what we are working here at Cardano. The problem is that we do not have a society and a world which is structured by merit and incentives done for contributions in meritocracies and, and deploying such meritocracies can solve this problem. We are working on finding the, the right way for governance of such communities, of such self-organizing communities. We can step off the dysfunctional systems that are keeping us as cogs in unhappy lives in which we cannot fulfill ourselves. Yes, we can step off and have our own identity and sovereignty and create a better world and a better society through this technology because now we exist, we have identities of our own and we have our own money <laughs> to ourselves which we can use and put together in projects that are helping us and not those at the top. I think that is what drives me, that what I have seen drives Charles and this community of uh, fans, of which I think I am the greatest, <laughs> of, of, of Charles' vision and work. With blockchain now, one can reach the individuals, yeah, having self-sovereign identities and so on and so forth, and bring them together. You can see that actually you can solve very difficult problems if you have a collective that is pursuing it. And if it's the right collective, you can solve a wicked problem very fast. A wicked problem is a problem where you can see the symptoms, but you cannot point to the cause, because the causes are dynamic, interdependent, and unclear. I've been working with the Department of Defense on wicked problems because this term came from the counter-terrorism fight where terrorists are networks which are decentralized and quickly uh, self-organizing, speaking of yes, uh, my expertise, 
when the Department of Defense is a top-down, very rigid structure, which actually cannot have the agility of response when it comes to those kind of uh, asymmetric attacks, as we call them. When you have a collapse and uh, a power vacuum happens, in this case, of course, there are two extremes. So we can either get into total anarchy or we can get into total big brother effect in which top-down dominance dictatorship. So how do we find that middle in between, you know, um, to offer society something better than before? If you look, you know, at the, the patterns in which the universe works, from the solar system to the atom, you have all this self-replicating structures. The atom with its electrons around the nucleus is like the solar system with the planets around the sun. So there are all these fractal self-replicating patterns at many levels. That uh, kind of structure is called a holarchy. And these holarchies are able to combine bottom-up and top-down structuring of things as well as societies, that's how we self-organize ourselves. So um, this is what we are working on right now at Cardano. I really very much love my students and that I appreciate their talent and potential. And I see in them the potential which maybe they don't see themselves sometimes. I actually mentored Garrett Camp before he founded Uber. He was my student in Calgary. So I, I took him under my wing, I can call it this way. So I, I keep his thesis, you know, uh, since then as a very dear thing to me because he was extremely talented. And this is a phenomenon which is uh, far too often in our education system. The talented kids are, you know, kind of big leveled, <laughs> leveled up. And, and uh, this is not good for the progress of our world. It's not good for meritocracy. So he was extremely talented and he developed during his master's thesis a um, system called In Order. It was, it is, was a search system through self-organization. Exactly that was the work in my emergent information systems lab in Calgary. So, so he was a pioneer as well in self-organizing applications and information systems. And so the thing is that it was bought by Google and it became stumble upon. And then he, that's how he moved to California and he met Travis and they co-founded Uber. And now Garrett bought the most expensive home in Hollywood. <laughs> so, you know, who would have thought when he was in Calgary? Well, if it is one advice, if I am to pick one, it is encapsulated in this saying, the real trick to life is not to live in the know, but to live in the mystery of what's possible. This is the only way in which you can create a better world. This is the only way to move forward. Begin, you know, by putting yourself in the shoes of the other how what I'm doing, let's say I'm a startup, impacting the others and not impacting them immediately. How is it going to impact them 10 years from now? So look at Facebook, look at DuPont, you know, what, what disasters they created without knowing, just by thinking they are helping. So begin with the end in mind as much as possible and build that emerging future in the best possible way for the other. I think it's called empathy. <clears throat> That's pretty much it. Philosophy uh, comes from two words, philos and sophia. Philos means love and, and uh, sophia means wisdom. So it is love of wisdom. This is from Greek. And as such, philosophy, I think, it's uh, the most important of it because it helps us look at the world in a way in which, you know, we come from the ancient tradition. So there's a lot of wisdom still on this planet which we forgot. 
as conquerors, we didn't do a very good job because now we are close to extinction. So we have to come back to that ancient wisdom. So philosophy, this love of wisdom, I think, should be at the foundation of where we come from in our science, in our work, in everything we do. This is actually what we are looking for, human knowing. So we can deploy technology as much as we want, but if we do not understand fundamental things, so, such as why are we here, we will not do the right thing. We did not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrowed it from our children. Then we change everything. We change how we look at the world. If we look at Earth as a spaceship which is carrying us, then immediately, I'm sure, all what we do will be with this social impact angle. So it's all about where you come from and, and then what you do in order to have a positive impact in the world. So, you know, if, if I'm looking at 2025 and even bef before and, and beyond, is to see Cardano really as a force for social good, for social impact, as they say, as blockchain and technology for social impact. The question is, what future do we want to create? What is the possible future? And this is why I'm here. This is actually what I foster. I foster those projects which are improving society and our world. And I see Cardano actually being that drive for the world. Uh, it has all the ingredients, from great science to great enthusiastic community to great minds and, uh, of course, amazing technology.